G'day there guys, I'm still patiently waiting for that age that my teachers told me that I would stop finding fart jokes funny. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, smack that subscribe button if you haven't already, and enjoy the bloody good episode we have for you today. Thank you. Posted by user, throw RA, am I dumb or what? Titled... My boyfriend cheated in his past relationship and made me feel bad about being shocked. Hi y'all, I'm in a very sticky situation. I'm reposting this as I didn't get that much feedback last time and I'm honestly going to meet up with him later on today to break up with him over this. I just don't want to feel like I'm making a major mistake and want to hear from as many of you as possible. Background My boyfriend, let's call him Dan, cheated in one of his past relationships, and I only found out about it last night. When he was 18, he got into a relationship with a girl, let's call her Betty, who had a very, very difficult home situation. His parents are very strictly religious, and so the only way Betty was allowed to stay over at night at his parents' home was if they got married. Fast forward two years, Betty, over time, also became very religious, and they had lost all feelings for each other, although she became more integrated into his family and his religious community. They had discussed that their relationship probably wouldn't last, but due to Betty becoming a part of his family and her home situation, he felt he couldn't end it and send her back to that. He downloaded dating apps and started seeing someone else. Let's call her Emma. Betty only found out about it when she went through his phone. They got divorced when he was 20, and he continued his relationship with Emma. Fast forward to now. Dan has a friend who has been using the dating apps whilst his girlfriend was abroad. We found out about it, and Dan had a chat with his friend where he told him to either break up with his girlfriend or get off the apps. We had a chat about it later, and I called his friend a dirty dog, and Dan said, You know, it's terrible. We all knew he had his attachment issues and he's been through a lot in life. I told Dan that that had pissed me off, there is no justification, attachment issues or not, and Dan then said, you know, I've cheated in the past, does that mean I'm undeserving of this relationship? I was told when we first started dating almost two years ago that he had cheated. When I probed further, he told me the relationship had ended and she knew I was seeing someone else but I started seeing her before the divorce was final. He is adamant he's told me before, and he has definitely alluded to it, but I didn't probe further as I took his word for it ages ago. So, I was damn horrified when he explained what had actually happened. I was so effing shocked and surprised, it's only when thinking about it now that it makes sense. I told him, Okay, so when the going gets tough, are you going to download Tinder? It makes so much sense now that you've given the reasoning behind your friend's actions, just as you've done for yourself. If you can rationalize it once, you can rationalize it again. He became extremely defensive and got angry at me. I asked him how long he was dating Emma for while he was with Betty, and he told me that doesn't concern me or our relationship. I asked him if he was sleeping with the two at the same time. He told me he was shocked that I could even ask him something like that. What a crude and disgusting question. Of course not. He said he was a kid then. I said wrong. You were 20, that's not even that long ago. He then decided to give me the silent treatment for a few hours before we spoke about it again. He told me that he put so much into this relationship and I completely disregard everything. How I just speak to him without thinking about my words, making him feel crappy, and that I am disgusting for even questioning his loyalty to me. We didn't stop arguing until I apologized to him and told him that I would stop thinking about everything in such a black and white way. I was extremely apologetic for questioning his commitment to our relationship and said I would stop self-sabotaging this relationship. I really felt bad about what had happened and what I had said. We made up and he left this morning, but I still don't feel at ease. I don't think I did anything wrong. Of course I was angry and maybe I could have asked him all those questions in a nicer manner, 
but the way he blew up at me and got super defensive was extreme. If I was in his position, I would be a lot more apologetic and say, I did something horrible in the past, there is no excuse for it, instead of proceeding to give loads of justifications for it. The fact that he somehow made me apologize to him is crazy to me. Like, I just can't believe it. Guys, am I crazy? TLDR, I felt like crap last night due to our arguments, like I really screwed up. Today though, I don't know how to feel. Guys, should I have not spoken to him the way that I did, or should I have not apologized? Edit, I didn't mention, but we spoke about his relationship with Betty before he told me about all the cheating. He told me he felt a strong sense of abandonment when she got on her train to go home. Just another person in his life who left him. He completely missed out that he had cheated on her, abandoning her first. Of course she was going to react like that. He made himself into such a victim, and I felt bad for him. I really did. When talking about the situation, he only spoke about himself. How hard it was for him being with someone with a crap home life, and the guilt he endured. Didn't mention how horrible she must have felt. You know, being the actual person suffering from abuse at home, and then being cheated on. Now down in the comments, CGY says, He should get an Oscar for that performance. What a master manipulator. He's the one who cheated previously, fudged the truth when he originally told you, and is still fudging the truth to this day. And now you're apologizing for making him feel crappy for his past actions that he doesn't seem to have any remorse for? Even now, it sounds like his cheating on Betty was completely justified to him. It is exactly how he would justify cheating on you, which is why he is so mad you called him out on it. No doubt, if and when he does cheat on you, he's going to blame it on you for not having complete faith in his loyalty. You were right to see him in a different light after realizing he can so easily justify what his friend is doing, because that is exactly what he would do in a similar situation. OP replies, When he cheats? No, sir, I will not be around for that. Not me. I'm trying to meet up with him today to break up after you lovely people and my flatmate slapped me back into reality. Good for you. He really got you going and had you apologizing for your moral beliefs repeatedly. Like, what the hell? And OP replies, Who would have fudging thought that this crap is insidious and a lot harder to spot when you're in the relationship? Like, it's actually insane. I would read this sub and be like, duh, kick him to the curb, to so many of the posts, and now I'm here? Who would have thought? Louis King 30 says, In the moment, everybody gets defensive. However, after a while, you have to show some self-reflection too. Like you did. I don't think your boyfriend has that maturity if he doesn't see things from your perspective. Forgive me for being naive about this, but is it really everyone? I really struggle understanding this defensive reaction in others. If I did something wrong and someone calls me out on it, I usually just feel fear and shame and become silent and then simply admit to my mistakes. Is that really such a rare thing? Feeling shame is a normal adult reaction. Not feeling remorse means you are more likely to be an a-hole. And Lipstick Lemon Drop says, The fact that he cheated in a past relationship isn't the problem. I've been there, and I would never dream of doing that with my current boyfriend. He's fantastic. People change, you know. But your boyfriend lied about it, gave you different stories, made himself the victim instead of his poor ex-wife who had to endure all of that, and then got mad at you when you got upset and uncomfortable about it. And this silent treatment on top of that? Is he a child? You're totally justified in how you feel. And now on to the update. So much has happened since then. I had a chat with my friend slash flatmate Tammy, who has been around him the most out of all of my friends. I told her about this situation, and she reminded me of so many awful examples of gaslighting and blatant lying that I had forgotten about. He told me he broke up with Emma and blocked her on all platforms, 
but a month after doing this, he wanted to give her closure, and so wrote a letter to deliver to her door. Emma happened to leave her house at that moment, saw him, and told him that if he doesn't leave, she would call the police. We thought about it, and thought, come on now. For her to react like that, he must have done something to her. I went and broke up with him that same day, but didn't give him any reasoning. Just said that I was unhappy, and he didn't question me. He said he was unhappy too, and also wanted to break up. It was maybe a five minute conversation at most. I went back home and had some drinks with Tammy, and we thought screw it, might as well shoot Emma a message because I'm drunk and curious. I spoke to Emma the next day, and I'm honestly so heartbroken and disgusted with myself that this is the man I was in love with for a year and a half when he's actually textbook psychopath and narcissist. I'm going to list what I found out from Emma because it is too damn long. 1. She was passed out one night after partying and came to with him on top of her. She asked him to stop and he didn't, and said that he was about to finish. I thought, thank Christ I've never blacked out in front of him, forgetting about this one time last year. It was after a New Year's Eve party, and I don't remember anything beyond the bar. He had to drag me home. I was in such a state that I was puking on public transport. When I woke up, I still had my contacts in and my jumper on, but skirt and tights were removed. He asked me about the sex we had last night, and I was just like, what are you talking about? He said, oh, sorry, I must have been dreaming. I didn't think much of it, but now I'm pretty certain about what had happened. Two, he kept forcing me to watch the series on the assassination of Versace with him, even though he'd already watched it before, and I wasn't digging the series. I told him that I didn't want to watch it anymore, and he wasn't too happy, but whatever. Before my birthday, he asked me what I thought about Versace earrings, and I thought, nope too pricey. I'm not one for expensive jewellery, but he got it for me anyway. I spoke to Emma, and he got her the exact same thing for her birthday, but she thought it was cute because they had watched the series together and really enjoyed it. Not to mention, those earrings were fake, lol. 3. He was still with Emma when he started dating me. He was also dating another girl around the same time, so that's three in one go that we know of. He told me he had broken up with Emma around four to five months before we met. Four, he tried it with Emma's 17-year-old sister. Five, his poor, vulnerable ex-wife. He told Emma that Betty was a hypersexual person and that she really wanted a threesome with his dirty dog friend, and the only reason it didn't happen was because his mate chickened out. Knowing what I know, I'm sure he was pressuring her into this. Six, He told me about a house party that Emma threw and he invited one of his friends to. He told me that his friend drank too much and passed out in a garden chair in the backyard. One of Emma's friends then climbed on top of him and proceeded to take advantage of him. When I mentioned this to Emma, she burst into tears and said that it was her friend that was passed out actually and his friend had taken advantage of her friend. There's video evidence of this, as some of her flatmates were sleazy and recorded it from an upstairs window. 7. Lying about his job title and income. I'm a student, and I was practically this effer's sugar mama, even though he knew about my money problems. He was here 5-6 to six days a week and never contributed to anything. Not bills, not rent, not even my grocery shop. I was out here cooking and cleaning, being housewife because he massively exaggerated his workload and importance at his workplace. He honestly made it out like he had no free time whatsoever. My idiot self should have freaking known he was delusional when he was out here applying to senior leveled positions without having even finished his undergrad. Oh, he also inflated his salary by two times. 8. He cheated on Betty all the time. 9. He had hit on one of Emma's friends and told her, If I send you a drunk text, you know why. I was massively uncomfortable with him being around two of my friends. Even though I love them so damn much and trust them wholeheartedly, I felt really uncomfortable with how much attention he would give them. 
He made it out to me that I was being insecure and a jealous bear for no reason, but after hearing about Emma's friend, nope, none of that crap was in my head. 10. I found Emma's nudes on his phone because I searched it one day and he blew up at me. He made me feel bad for going through his phone and not trusting him. Told me it was pictures that he forgot to delete. Talking to Emma though, she said she made him delete all of those in front of her, so the expletive obviously made a backup. 11. That letter he tried to deliver? He was outside her door at 10pm. Emma was obviously shaken up. 10pm, Jesus. And 12. He was cheating on Emma the whole time too. Probably cheated on me too. There's way more that he did, but my effing god, am I a d-bag for being with that and not realising what a loser I was with? After hearing all of this, I decided to message his sister and tell her, Listen, I'm scared of your brother, so I will be posting his things to your house. If I ever find him outside my door, I will call the police. I also messaged his friend's girlfriend, telling her her man's on all these dating apps, and also sent her screenshots of him on these apps. He had the effing audacity to tell her he was being catfished. Sir, are you Beyonce? The hell? I tried empathizing with her and told her, listen, Dan was crazy abusive too. You just need to see the light. She only freaking went and told him. I had him blocked on all platforms, and after hearing that I called him abusive, he messaged every single one of my friends that hadn't blocked him yet, telling them that I was acting erratic and crazy. Same way I was acting when I had a mental breakdown a while ago. He did not even know me then, so that was a chuckle and a half, and that he was really concerned about me and wanted to know why I was calling him abusive. None of them responded and blocked him immediately. I low-key felt bad about leaving him scrambling and baffled about the situation because he does not know the half of what I know, and part of me woke up today wanting to explain it all, but now? After having typed all of this out and reminded myself? Nope, there is nothing more satisfying than him being stressed and confused and getting no answers in return. I love to see it. He's already on Tinder like three days afterwards, so he can't be that cut up. Even though in his messages to my friends, he was really sad and upset. Aww, teeny tiny violin noises. TLDR, he was crazier than I thought, and I'm just going to pretend that whole relationship never happened. An ex? Not me. I've never been in a relationship before. Now in the comments, Mr. Merb says... Wow, bullet dodged. And OP replies, indeed. Don't know if you actually dodged that bullet, but at least it wasn't a fatal hit. You got out and found out what kind of scumbag he really is. I hope what you have done will prevent others to falling into his pathetic and narcissistic behaviour. You're out, and good luck with your future life. And OP replies, got to agree. It was my first relationship, and this is the kind of crap people deal with when they're 16 and learn from. But I'm having to find my worth at 23 years old. I honestly think if it wasn't him, I might have been taken advantage of by someone else, but it is what it is. Can't feel too bad for myself. Just gotta be glad that it was someone who couldn't even keep their story straight. Well, I'm glad you got out of this. It's an educational beatdown for sure but you've learned and can move on and find someone that will love you for you. I hope you find the love you deserve. Stay strong. Screening relationships takes time, practice, and isn't an exact science at all. Don't be too hard on yourself, but also don't rush into relationships too fast. While your friends who have dated a lot at your age will be moving more easily through dating, don't compare yourself and your relationships to them. You're on the only had one serious relationship level of dating, not the mid-twenties and well-experienced in dating know what I want and how to screen potential partners. Be gentle to yourself. Cutiefly says, You aren't a d-bag for being with a loser like that. Anyone can be tricked and manipulated into situations that they only see later more clearly. Be kind to yourself. 
Not only that, but be proud of yourself for escaping that pathetic waste of air called your ex. He sounds horribly manipulative, to be honest. So good on you for getting out of that. I'm glad you're in a better place now. It can only go up from here. Take care, be safe, and whatever you do, don't ever let him near you again. Or make you feel bad or guilty for this. It's never a bad thing to take care of yourself first and foremost. And OP replies, Thank you. I really did not see anything wrong with the relationship at all while I was with him. Honestly thought I was going to marry the beer. Ugh. It really was just the lying unwarranted for no reason that made me step back and think, What the hell? As I said in your OP, that guy was a master manipulator. Just be glad you got out relatively unscathed. Your heart may be a little bruised, but it will heal. Please make sure you get checked at the clinic. He isn't the type of guy to use condoms all the time, and even with a condom, lots of stuff is transferred in other ways. Get checked ASAP. And OP replies, I'm definitely going to get checked, but was thinking of giving it six weeks. Just in case he gave me a little parting gift right at the end. You should get checked now, and then have a follow-up in six weeks, then six months. Some sexually transmitted diseases and infections can be tested for almost immediately, and that six weeks head start on treatment can mean an awful lot. Six weeks, then six months, is because some infection can take a while to reach a testable point in your body. You can test negative for HIV a couple of months after contracting it, for example. G'day there guys, and that's the end of today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and were entertained by today's bloody good content. As always, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your beautiful faces and names will be up on screen right now. Haven't forgot about you guys, sorry I was taking a little break there. So yeah, if you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. If you want to be on this screen, there's links down in the description below where you can sign up and help support the channel and all future projects that I'm going to be doing on this one. With all that said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I'll see you in the next episode, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you.